Yo, so it's PKK98 here, and today I'm going to be talking about privacy front ends. Now, I know for a fact this will mean absolutely nothing to anyone, unless you're a complete nerd like me or have the basic ability of doing a basic search on the internet. What is a pri... fucking spell. Alternative and privacy friendly front ends to, for social media. First fucking result. Do your fucking research if you're confused. We live in a day and age with the internet. How the fuck do people not... How the people... How oh, the fuck are people not understand this sort of thing? Ah! Mm. You may have heard of Twitter, you may have heard of YouTube, in fact you've definitely heard of YouTube, but you may have also heard of Reddit. Now the problem with these websites is that they don't exactly care about your privacy. Like they tend to use your data a lot, you know, serve you ads. And a lot of people going to these websites may feel that their privacy is being invaded. Maybe they don't want their data collected by just watching a YouTube video. So maybe they'll want a privacy front end, which is essentially a website that filters the important content off of the website onto their own site. There's three that I know of so far. There's one that's actually been shut down because it was like Instagram was basically fighting against that sort of thing. So the first one is Knitter. Now something that I actually use is Tweet. Dot com, and if you go to tweet.com, well, it, it ba basically what it does is that, let's say for example, you put in mine, PKKid98 from YT. So you may have noticed Riverside Rocks. Now, let's try it again, unofficialbird.com. So basically what it does, what this particular website does is that it chooses a random data instance. So in other words, you don't have to use the same one. So if one is going down, you just use another one. Also for some reason on this data instance, I'm verified. I guess that's just a way to stick it to Twitter. But then of course there's Invidious, which is, you may have heard of it. It's a YouTube front end. So essentially it's YouTube, but without all the tracking stuff. And on my own channel, you can see, oh, these are my videos, but I'm not on YouTube. Now, you might also notice this little icon here, which is uBlock Origin. You may notice that nothing is being blocked. So for example, if I open a video on both Invidious and YouTube, you can see, like, the Invidious instance is still, like, it's, it's done blocking, it's only blocked two things but the YouTube one is just still blocking. So what it's essentially doing is proxying YouTube's servers in order to actually grab the video and play it on this side without all the trackers. Or in layman's terms, it's grabbing the video from Google and saying, hey, this is our content now. And of course, it's the same with like Twitter, for example. Like if I go to my actual Twitter, also I noticed that Twitter also says X Corp now, it's not Twitter Corp anymore. Look at how much it's blocking. But yeah, so Nida is literally blocking nothing. The problem with it, like I've, like I've done a video on it before, it was like a shit post meme kind of thing, but Twitter is so fucking broken with uBlock Origin because of the stuff that it blocks but here like it's so light it is unbelievably light and I can just go ah oh, load more oh look all my stuff all my stuff yep everything just don't forget to watch my stuff now let's try and search in Twitter let's let's try and search in Twitter okay then yeah okay then. Uh, you see what I mean? It's really janky. And the last one I want to talk about is Teddit. Like if I go to Reddit right now, if I go to Reddit, just just the front page of Reddit, not a specific Reddit, not a specific subreddit, just the Reddit front page. 16, 21, 26, 30. What's it even blocking? Jesus Christ, redditstatic.com. Look at this. Let's actually be a bit more fair because this is, this looks more like old Reddit. So if I go to old.reddit.com, I mean there's less stuff, but it also still takes a while to load. But still, let's look up some memes. Okay, Ted, it seems to be a bit slow. I mean, that's, that's the problem with these proxy sites is that they usually tend to be slow because, of course, it's not owned by a big company. So they're literally proxying stuff from bigger content. So of course it'll be slower because, you know, it's just like, random people across the world, not like a big corporation. Okay, whatever, you get the picture, you get the picture, you get the picture. So yeah, these privacy front ends tend to be a bit boggy, although if you want to view YouTube content, or you want to view Twitter content, or you want to use Reddit content, but you don't want all the trackers, and you can't be asked to use uBlock Origin for some reason because you're a fucking mongoloid, or your browser just doesn't support it because Google Chrome. They're good, but they're also bad at the same time. Knitter is actually probably the best. Invidious is pretty good, but although it's a bit janky. Let's be perfectly honest, we all know that Google are very big on like advertising, so of course they're gonna try and block as much stuff as possible, like 
close as many back doors as they can so at some point it's just going to stop working. If you want to use these websites, go ahead. I'll link all of them in the description. So anyway, I've been your host, Pika Kid 98. It's been Pika Kid 98 Chat and you've all been fantastic. So until the next video, I say bye bye.